Hey guys, let's take a look at ratio and proportion. This is an interesting chapter today. Uh, the definition of ratio is basically just something to something. It just really means a fraction. Like they might say something like, oh, the ratio of guys to, you know, to ladies is, you know, 12 to seven or something like that. Um, there could mean there's 12 plus nine or 19 kids in the class, or there could mean there's 120 guys and, you know, 70 ladies, who knows? But uh, equivalent forms of, let's say, for example, three-fourths, what's another fraction that means the same thing as three-fourths? You could just multiply the top and the bottom by two, right? It'd be six over eight. You can multiply the top and the bottom by three, nine over 12, same thing, it's just, you know, that's a ratio, okay? And we're gonna use that um, to solve equations. This is really neat. Uh, if you have a proportion, that means that is two ratios with an equal sign. And for example, in other words, like you could say uh, three fourths is equal to six eighths. Is that true? I mean, this is true, right? Here's one neat thing. You probably know this, but let me just go over it anyway. Um, one way that you can prove that one fraction is equal to another fraction is by multiplying, cross multiplying. In other words, you could say, okay, I'm going to multiply the top left by the bottom right. Three times eight is 24. Does that equal the bottom left times the top right? Four times six, that is, yeah, that's equal to 24. So that proves that everything is right. So that's one way to prove that you can, uh, the two, uh, two ratios are exactly correct. And we can use that to solve equations in algebra. And it's really nothing complicated. You just use that and then set things up and I'll show you exactly how it works. It's pretty cool. Okay, um, we will, we'll skip that part. We do, you know, we could do one more. Let's say for example, um, I don't know, let's say three fifths and that we could say that equals six over 10, right? That is true, isn't it? Three fifths is the same thing as six tenths, right? Okay, well you can go three times 10, 30. Does that equal six times five? Yes, it does. It just proves that it works. And we'll use that to solve these equations. So pause and copy that. Okay. Now, we know that if we have a proportion that if we multiply this top left by the bottom right, that's equal to the bottom left times the top right. Correct? Okay, so 20 times X is what we're gonna do. In other words, just like we did this, the top left times the bottom right equals the bottom left times the top right. We're gonna do the same thing here. So we'll set this ratio here. So 20 times X, which is 20 X, equals 15 times four, which is 60, okay? Now we can solve for x. Now we have an equation. So we just divide each side by 20, and then 60 divided by 20 is three. There you go. We just solved what x was. x is three. That's it. Okay, let's try another one. Copy, pause this and copy. All right, I mean, the same thing. We're just, what I would do if I were you is always make sure you do like maybe the bottom left, or no, no, make sure you do the, the left part of your equation, whatever, whatever you're, however you're doing your equation, make sure you have the um, variable, the P or the A or the X or whatever on the left side, just so it looks nice and clean. So what I would do in this case, I would go, okay, so five times P, which is five P, that equals four times seven, which is 28. And the last thing you have to do is just divide by five and there you go. You can leave it, 28 over five is fine. In the back of your book, they might have you know five and three fifths or whatever. That's it, ratio and proportion, okay? All right, let's take a look at, ooh, P to the Q power. This looks complicated, doesn't it? Let's go back and do an old first, all right? If they say, evaluate this, the cube root of P, if P is equal to, you know what, forget that. Let's say eight, all right? What's the cube root of P if P is equal to eight? Well. That means you're just gonna put in for P, whatever number they say it is. Now what's the cube root of eight? In other words, what number times itself three times gives you eight? And the answer is two, dollar is two. We've done this, plenty of those before, all right? And let's go back and do this. Evaluate, what's P to the third power? If P equal, you know, forget this, let's say five. If P equals five, what's P to the third power? Well, you just write this thing over, right? Instead of, you put a five in there for a P. Five to the third power means five times five times five, which is 125, and there you go, okay. All this is, this today is just a slight little you know, nudge of that. You're just gonna do both of these instead of just one out of them. So they'll say, what is the P root of Q if P is three and Q is 64? So all you do is just do the same thing. You just stick it in there. So P is three, there's your three. 
There's your radical. The cube is going to be 64. So they're asking you, what is the cube root of 64? There you go. Dollar is to it. So the cube root of 64 is 4. That's it. Okay. Try the practice problems on page 175. We'll do those together and come together. So try the first one. Okay, let's try, well, actually we'll try the first two if we want, just pause it between them. Okay, so I would do, go ahead and do the P first. So P times seven is seven P. That equals four times two, which is eight. And you only have to do one more thing. Just divide by seven, divide by seven, done. P is equal to eight over seven. Or if you might, you might put one, or excuse me, yeah, one and one seventh, same thing. Okay, pause it and try B. Same thing here, S times three is three S. Make sure you write your S like a S, not a five. Five times four is 20. And then the last thing you do is divide by three. So S is equal to 20 over three. There we go. All right. All right, pause it and try C and D. Okay, well, X to the Y power, if X is four and Y is two, that means you just put it in there. So that's X to the Y means four there. And then Y is two, so four to the second power. Four times four is 16. Boom, there we go. All right, let's try D. Okay, the X root of Y, if X is four, X is four and Y is 16, there you go. In other words, they're asking you what number times itself four times gives you 16? The answer is two, only thing it could be, okay. All right, you guys have a great day. I mean, we're inching into this book, man. We've got, what, 54 lessons done here? We're, we're knocking through this stuff, so keep at it. Do a good job. Um, get try to really try to get like 25 or more right on these things. Take a couple extra seconds if you can, especially on ones you're having a little bit of trouble with. But don't worry, the ones you're having trouble with, and eventually it'll start making sense. And we're going to do some of these things again next year in Algebra One as well. So that'll help you knock this stuff out. So you guys have a great day, and uh, take care. Thanks.